If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In order to find the equivalent capacitance between points A and B, we're going to have to take this relatively complex circuit and simplify it into a more simple circuit. And in order to do that, we would first note that these two resistors right here are in parallel. And indeed, these two resistors are also in parallel. And we know that when resistors are in parallel, the following equation applies. And so what we can do for the first pair of parallel resistors is plug in the resistance of 12 ohms in here and 6 ohms into the second one. And then we could pick up our calculators and add these two fractions together. And then there's a neat little trick whereby if we invert both sides of this equation, we would get REQ over 1, which is just REQ, and then we would also get 12 over 3. And of course, 12 over 3 simplifies to just 4. So that means that these two resistors, when combined, have a total resistance of 4 ohms. We're going to do the same analysis for the other two parallel resistors. We can plug the 4 ohms in for R1 and then the 8 ohms in for R2. We could then add these two fractions together. And then we'll do that neat little inverting both sides of the equation trick. And we could then see that the equivalent resistance of those two resistors is 8 thirds ohms. Now, once we have figured out those two equivalent resistances, what we can do is actually redraw the circuit. And when we do that, we're going to take the two resistors that are in parallel and draw them as a single resistor. And then we'll do the same thing with these two resistors. So it's going to look something like the following. So here is the 4 ohm resistor that came from the first set of parallel resistors, and then this is the 8 thirds ohm resistor that came from the second set of parallel resistors. Now that we have these three resistors situated in a row, we can see that they are in fact in series with one another, and then we could use the following equation for series resistors. And so when using this equation, all we have to do is add together the three individual resistances to get the overall resistance. So we'll just go ahead and plug in the 4 ohms for R1, 5 ohms for R2, and 8 third ohms for R3. And when we add those together on our calculators, we get approximately 35 thirds ohms. And so this would be the correct answer to part A. Now for part B, we're given a voltage of 35 volts. And so what we can do is use Ohm's law to calculate the amount of current that's flowing through this circuit. So we'll just simply use this equation and we'll plug in the 35 volts for delta V. And then we're going to plug in for the resistance, the 35 thirds ohms that we just computed. And when we compute that, we get a current of 3 amps. Now, since these three resistors are in series, that means that all 3 amps are flowing through the three resistors. It's a fundamental rule that when you have resistors in series, they experience the same amount of current flowing through them. So we can definitely say that 3 amps is flowing through all three resistors. At this point, what we can do is go back to Ohm's law, but this time in the form of delta V equals current times resistance. And since we know the resistance and current values for each of the three resistors, we can calculate their delta Vs, again, by using this equation. So for example, let's do this for the first resistor. So we'll plug in the three amps worth of current and then the four ohms worth of resistance, and we can see that we get 12 volts. So that means that 12 volts is the potential drop on this resistor. We'll do the same thing with the second resistor. We'll multiply the current by the resistance. And when we do that, we could see perhaps that we have 15 volts of a potential drop. And then finally, we'll multiply on the third resistor the current by its resistance. And when we do that, we can see 8 volts is the potential drop across that resistor. Now, why is it important to get the voltage on each resistor? Well, it turns out that if we backtrack, that is, if we start from this resistor and then move back to the original picture, we come back to those parallel resistors that we had started with. And whenever you move backwards from a resistor to a parallel set of resistors, you're going to take with you the voltage. So in other words, the voltage on this resistor is 12 volts, and the voltage on this resistor is also 12 volts. By the same logic, we can work backwards from this resistor to these two parallel resistors that we had originally started with. And since the 8 volts applied to that resistor, we're going to bring it backwards to the original picture. And we're going to carefully label 8 volts here and 8 volts there as well.
in the middle, we can see that the potential drop was 15 volts. So we'll confidently label 15 volts right here. Now we're finally ready to answer the question. Remember, we're looking for the current in each resistor. Current is simply the potential drop divided by the resistance. So what we do is go to each of these five resistors and we divide the potential drop by the resistance. So for example, up here, we take the potential drop of 12 volts and divide it by 12 ohms. And indeed, we would get one for the current or one amp. Similarly, if we take the potential drop of 12 volts and divide it by six ohms, we're going to get two amps worth of current and so on. So here 15 divided by five is going to give us three amps worth of current. Eight divided by four gives us two amps worth of current. And then eight divided by eight gives us one amp worth of current. So for all five resistors, we now have the currents that are flowing through them. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you're welcome to send in your own question to the email address on the screen and I'll do my best to post an answer to it.